So let's take a table here. First of all, you might want to convert this, if that is your pleasure, to see that x would equal 3 to the g of x. That's what this is saying. So if I make a table x and g of x, let's just plug in a couple of points really fast here. For example, if I put in a 1 here, 3 to what power gives me 1? 0. If I put in a, a, a 3 here, 3 to what power gives me a 3? Well, that's 1. If I put in, um, let's say, a 9, this would be a 2, because 3 squared is 9. And then uh, finally, let's just put in like a, a 1 third and realize that's negative 1. Those points should do it, since I know the general shape now. I'm getting better at that. Put these here. And let's graph these points. So at 1, we're at 0. So this point is a common point with the previous graph. Then at 3, 1, 2, 3, I'm going to be at 1. So now I'm going to be only up here at 1. At 9, I'm going to be at 2. Remember before, the previous thing, at 4 I was at 2. Now to get to that height of 2, I've got to go all the way over to 9. Look at that. What's with that? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I only make it to 2. So this is growing even slower than the first one. But at uh, 1 third, I'm at negative 1. So what I see here, at 1 third, I'm at negative 1. So I see a curve that looks like this. It undershoots here, but once it crosses the x-axis, it then overshoots, and it goes right down there. Now, it's hard to see that maybe in this picture. I'm sorry. But in fact, uh, let me just enlarge this maybe to show detail, just so you can see that little piece right there. This is sort of important to see how the two things work against each other. In the first case, we have this kind of picture. And in the second case, we have this picture. I just want to show you how these things sort of meet up, you see. They crisscross here, and, and to the right, the purple wins. So the smaller, the smaller um, uh, uh, base wins out. But then, this is log base 3 of x. But then, when you go to the right of 1, you see, then the red, then the higher power wins out. So this, this is sort of on top for a while, but then it's on the bottom for the rest. OK, neat. So there's the graph of log base 3. Uh, how would log base 10 go? Well, now I think the pattern is, um, is pretty clear. For log base 10, the higher the power, the, the slower this part goes, but then it goes up in front here. So log base 10, still smooth. No, no, no creases, but just it would look like that now. But again, remember, it's still asymptotic. So even though this picture is really awful, it would still just be asymptotic, just like the purple, but it would be always between the purple and the y-axis. It would always fit in between the purple and y-axis. This would be log base 10. So you get a sense of how this looks. Let's just do one last one to really muck up the works. So to muck up the works, let's try this. Let's try h of x, or I'll call it m of x for muck. Mucking up the works, we'll look at log base a half of x. What if you have a, a number down there that's a half instead of just being you know, a big number? Well, what would that do? Well, if you convert what that means into an exponent, what you see is what? x equals 1 half to the uh, m of x. And if you rewrite that, you'd see x equals 2 to the minus m of x. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the same graph as this, but now I'm going to have a negative exponent. And what that does is basically flips along the x-axis. Because notice, for example, if I plug in, let's just plug in one point here, for example. Let's just plug in x equals 2. If x equals 2, then what would m have to be? m wouldn't be just 1 like it was before. It would have to be negative 1 to make up for the negative sign in front of this. So then m would be negative 1, because 2 to the negative negative 1 is 2. So you see what happens is this point that used to be 1 is now going to be negative 1. And so this point that used to be 2 will now be negative 2. And this point that used to be negative 1 will now be 1. So in fact, I get the exact same picture as the purple, but it's going to go reflected over the x-axis. And so this is what the log function looks like when you have a base that's a number that's between 0 and 1. The log function looks like that, sort of the, the, the mirror image 
of this one. However, when you have a log of a base that's bigger than 1, it looks like this. And the bigger the number, the more sharper it turns. So if you want to graph this function, the first thing I would do personally would be to graph this. And notice it's just a flip over the x-axis. Think about this, work through it, plot a lot of points, and you'll see that, in fact, these are the graphs. Enjoy.